Welcome to Sports Connection. I'm Darren Joins, Williamson County Schools Athletic Director. I'm here with Mr. Tate Matthews. Tate, flag football in the books. We totally messed up the picks, <laughs> which we'll talk about here in just a little bit. We've got uh, district individual tennis tournament wrapped up. Brentwood with the complete sweep in boys and girls, singles and doubles. And then we've got baseball and softball on deck this week. And then the Wilco workout. Lots to talk about. Big week, Kentucky Derby at the end of the week as well. I know that hit, hits home to you and a lot of uh, Kentucky natives here in the mid-state. But flag football, the more things change, the more things stay the same. Tennis felt like uh, a lot of a few other schools had closed the gap the last couple of years. Brentwood said, okay, we'll take care of that. Baseball and softball, going to be some exciting tournaments. So it's, it's a fun time to... Uh, it's a fun time to be a sports fan in Wilco right now. Let's talk about this, Tate. The Great Eight, which we were clowning on the uh, <laughs> the host site in terms of the work you had to do as a fan to be a part of it. But in terms of the results, in that event, there are 32 events, 16 on the boys' side, 16 on the girls' side. Williamson County Schools, we went 11 of those 32 a little better than a third. What a great performance by our track athletes at that event. Fantastic performance and want to be um, fair. I think we're fair and balanced here on Sports Connection. Do you agree? Fairly fair and Fairly balanced. fair and balanced. <laughs> Fairly fair. Don't know about balance. Uh, we're fair. I, I like what you just said. We're fair, but we're not balanced. We're fair, we're not balanced. Uh, I, I would like to. I didn't. I was not clear when I was clowning on the grade eight, but it dang sure wasn't FRA's fault. Uh, I do think FRA deserves a, a, a hip hip hooray for hosting the event because it's one of the greatest events. It was a last minute venue change. Uh, the thing I still don't give them credit for is that they aren't smart enough to pick up the phone and call you and get one of your. Uh, 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 facilities. Again, call Darren Joins. It's um, it's uh, darren.joins at wcs.edu. We'd be love to have it here and promise you, you you won't ever leave once it's here. So, but <clears throat> uh, 11 out of 32 events, there were some runner-ups in there. That's right. Didn't even count those. Didn't even count those. It was a dominating performance by WCS. Oh, and by the way, there were a couple of state records by WCS at the uh, grade eight event too. So I love it, I know, but what I love most about it is the young people love it. One last thing, I'll tell you how bad the parking is if you've never been there. Yeah, and it's all uphill. <laughs> Charles Pulliam, the hardest man, working man in media. We, we talk about it, he's, got, he's holding 30 pounds of cameras at the state track meet and the only person beating him in the 1600 is Claire Stigall and he said, I had to haul all that up the hill, and I had to park all the way down at uh, <laughs> ML Rose Pub. He said, if they have it there again next year, Charlie Pulliam won't be there. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> well, let's talk about Miss Claire from Nowensville. She wins the 800 by 10 seconds, breaks her own state record. She wins the 1600 by 7 seconds, and there's a pretty – Good young lady out at the web school. Yes. Abby Cheeseman beat her by seven yeah. seconds. Uh, she also has the state record in the 3200 for those keeping score at home. Yes. But Claire, man, what she's doing is, is pretty unbelievable. So she wins both of those. You get Abby Miller from Brentwood, wins the 300 hurdles. The relay team at Brentwood in the 4x4 four four for the girls, they win. Daily, Daisy Oatesfall wins the high jump. That's on the girls' side. Five winners. On the boys' side, Tate, talk about those six events that we won. Callahan Fielder of Brentwood takes first place in the 3200. Cameron High of Brentwood, 110 hurdles, the 110 hurdles first place. The 4x4, four four, just like on the girls' side, goes to Brentwood. They're, again, their relay teams are second to none. Donovan Starr, who, if you've been paying attention, just keeps got a Clemson football offer, got a Tennessee Vol football offer in the last couple of weeks. Takes home first place in the high jump, and then Sterling Weldon does what he always does. He pulls home the, the double crown and the long jump and the triple jump. Uh, Nolensville had the top three in, in the triple, right? 
Sterling Weldon, Brandon Brooks, Emory Nixon Westby. Pretty cool. So uh, very dominating performance on the boys' side as well. Got to go back to the girls. Two things. One, uh, that Abby Faith Cheeseman that you're talking about, she will win the D2. It won't even be close. She beat her by seven seconds. She also ran the second leg. Uh, Claire Stigall also ran the second leg of the 4 by 400 They thought, we'll put her in there. We got a chance to take home first place over Brentwood. She ran the fastest 400 split of anybody. <laughs> it. The only reason she doesn't win the 400 and have the state, chance, the state record in the 400 is because she doesn't run the 400. It's, they ran her on the second leg. They said she was smoking. They were in the lead. Brentwood comes back. Um, but uh, I th I th I'm not sure. I think it was Abby that she was against. But she said, I knew she was going to catch. She was in Brentwood's in the lead after the first leg. The baton goes to Claire. I, I, I can't remember who the Brentwood uh, young lady was. but she And she ran a smoking time, too. She said, I knew she was going to catch me. I just knew... <laughs> Don't let her pass me by too much. And then Brentwood comes back and wins. I mean, it's fun. If you, I'm gonna quote Coach Crawford. You know I love to coach quote Coach Crawford. If you don't, if you're not a fan of Claire Stegall, that's a you problem. Because she's fun to watch. Man. She's fun. And Charles Pulliam was telling me, and I forget which one, probably the 1600 that she would have placed on the boys' side. On the boys' side. This is her third week of competition. She keeps breaking her records. So pretty cool. And, and another lady uh, that we've talked about, she's going to have a huge athletic career. Uh, you're starting to – she was younger. Daisy Oatesvall is an athlete. She's – you want to talk about explosive? Daisy Oatesvall. She'll be a – she's going to be a Wilco winner before she leaves here. She is. Maybe sooner than later. Than later. <laughs> At least a finalist sooner than later. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a little tennis before we get into baseball and softball. Brentwood, so the event was at Centennial High School. They hosted. They got the six tennis courts. Brentwood wins all four individual. There's an individual tournament. That's where I go out and compete as an individual for my school. And then there's a team tournament, which takes place this week. So this was the individual tournament. Girls singles, Evelyn Rissner for Brentwood, winner. Boys singles, Evan Lee, winner. Boys doubles, the team of Stephen Smith, Drew Miller, winner. Winner. And in girls doubles, Emsley Meyer, Vivi Huddleston, winner. Winner. And in a couple of those cases, in a couple of those cases, they beat another Brentwood team or individual. It's remember, hey, last couple of years, Franklin snuck in there, yeah. Ravenwood, Brentwood said, okay, it's about time to get things right in the tennis world. That's hey, dominating. But in a couple of years, you watch. Coach Tigert and Franklin. He's got some good young players. He's creating this energy about it. There's a lot of excitement around Franklin. I'm telling you, watch out. Oh, yeah. Well, Coach Tigert's a – he's a uh, – He's a coach. He's a coach. That's exactly right. Kind of like Coach Craig in golf. Maybe not his background. He's a baseball guy. He's done great in golf because he's a coach. That's right. Coaches can coach. Correct. Let's talk a little baseball. So we had our final series of the year. All series were 2-1, by the way. Again, yep. no, no sweeps this week. Which means parity. Parity. Uh, a lot of good teams. Uh, Brentwood over Page, 2-1. Indy over Centennial, 2-1. Summit over Franklin, 2-1. Ravenwood over Nolansville, 2-1. I don't want to take away from that. But I believe Coach Hudson, after they wrapped up the district, kind of turned it back a little bit. I'm not taking away from Ravenwood's 2-1 win, but they had wrapped up the district. So that gives the final standings, Tate. Uh, you've got Nolansville first, 17-4, and four, 21 district matchups. I'm, I'm, I love it. Yeah. Independent 16-5, and five, so obvious top two teams. You've got Ravenwood 11-10 and 10 in third place. They really came on late. Yep. Summit playing well late, 10-11. Uh, and 11. Then you've got Centennial, Brentwood. Centennial wins the tiebreaker. Uh, because they won that series. So they're both 9 and 12. Page ends up being 7th, Franklin 8th, because Page won that series over Franklin. So with that being said, Tate, let's take a look at that baseball bracket with the tournament coming up. So we've got two sites. Yes, sir. There's, there, there's the one seed is one site, and, and that's where those games are played. That's Nolensville. Mm. The two seed is Independence. 
that's their site. So Nolansville doesn't have to win this thing. They won the regular season. They go on to the region tournament. But as you look at the, that bracket, what are you seeing happening, Tate? Nolansville, Franklin, Summit, Centennial, that pl takes place at Nolansville. Battle of the Woods, Ravenwood, Brentwood, uh, and then Independence Page on that side. You got to win that side to, to make it. No one's real doesn't have to. Or it's going home. Because they're making it. Thoughts? I think I think you're right about what you said uh, about Nolansville, but still, <clears throat> final ranking, 17 and 4 for Nolansville. I think there's been a lot talked about that. Independence 16 and 5. I don't think enough has been talked about that. I think it's gonna show itself in the tournament. I think the Eagles are uh, kind of got a us against the world mentality going into the tournament. Nobody's banking on us, and I agree with it. So, are you asking me to pick the bracket? So, and, and I, I don't want to make sure I didn't confuse. It, it's not winning a side. I'm just saying all those teams would have to. Yeah, the bottom half of the bracket. So, so here's what happens. If Nolansville is in the final, then whoever else is in the final goes to the tournament. That's right. If Nolansville doesn't make the final, you have, you to, have win to win the final. Right. That's the part I don't totally love, but that's I get it. So, uh, yeah, I'm asking you, how do you think it goes? I don't think Nolansville wins the tournament because I think ultimately it doesn't matter to I don't it. think Nolansville goes to the finals. It doesn't matter to them. They're not going to throw off or do any of that no. kind of thing. They're going to throw their people in order. They're just not going to have quite the They're not going to do whatever focus. it takes to have to win. That's right. Because you don't have to. Why burn an arm out? So I don't think, it doesn't mean I don't think Nolansville doesn't end up in Murfreesboro, but I don't think they end up in the final, which that makes the district tournament final. Wow. So how do you see that shaking out? Uh, Nolo you over Franklin. Summit over Centennial. I don't see a whole lot of ups upsets. For I, I see no upsets. No, me neither. First round. Nolo, Summit, Ravenwood, Indy. In the final four. In the final four. Okay. So you're going chalk. Chalk. And then what happens? That's strong, by the way. That's, uh, I'm going Summit. Uh, I agree. Okay. I don't want... I agree. It, I, I really don't do. Don't read anything... Not, not you. Don't read anything into this other than... I think Summit wins. I think Indy beats Ravenwood. Agreed. You like that? Yeah. I mean, not necessarily like. Uh, I like that pick. Okay. Here's where it gets a little cloudy. Yes. Because now all these people that have lost games, they've got to come through the consolation bracket. I think that's where no one'sville backs off. I do too. So it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Right. So then I think Indy beats Summit. Indy's win or go home. Right. Uh, unless Nolo gets there. Right. That's right. But... Uh, and then I, I don't think you want to do all this. No, we're not doing yeah, it. Yeah, okay. It's too confusing. But I think... The final is who? Okay, you ready for this? I, I, I'm going to write mine down so it doesn't look like I'm making it up. I think Indy beats Summit. I think Summit wins two. And then Indy gets them. I think it takes the juice out of them. I think it's Indy, Ravenwood... And then I'm going with old Eagle Eye for the district. That's exactly what I said. Well, if it's anything like flag football, so, uh, it's let, not good. Let me let Indy and Ravenwood know that means neither one of you making it. <laughs> <laughs> I, Sorry, fellas. That's what I see happening in Indy advancing. Uh, but I, I really like what Ravenwood's doing. But I think I could see it go either way, Ravenwood or Summit. Yeah. Which means which means it'll probably be Centennial Brentwood. Right. I don't think. Uh, Page and Franklin have the firepower to do it. I, Centennial does. It's too long of a too long of a. Cent, I think Centennial and Brentwood both could make it. Yep. If it's the right scenario, but uh, I think it ends up being Indy Ravenwood and having to win that matchup because No Onesville is not in the final. I think when and, and I'd like to know what you think because in basketball you just can't do it right, but in baseball you do. You twenty one district games. I think. At the end of 21 district games, I think it really is a clear picture. It is what it is, right? right. That's a lot of games. And I think Nolansville, Independence, Ravenwood, Summit are the four best teams. I, I do too. I do too. The, the thing that I think is going to happen, um, in fact, I'm gonna, this is where we're not balanced, but this is a fair assessment. <laughs> the two that come out, 
They're going to the sectional for sure, and probably the state tournament. I think they're both going to the state tournament. So, which happened last year. So I, I think unless something happens between now and then, I think Nolensville is going to be with Farragut at the end. And I haven't seen the draw. That Nobody's even made it yet. It's a lot of pressure, but I think it'll be no low Farragut for the title. Well, if Farragut doesn't make it, that's like – Yeah. Oof. When he talked to the coach, that didn't happen. <laughs> no I pressure, guess. coach, but you got 12 Division One players on your team. Yes. You ought to be there. Hey. And you got one headed to – No, no, no. Oh, double. Yeah. Let's talk a little softball. So softball, not quite uh, – Determined yet? You see some of those matchups from this past week. Nolensville keeps on rolling. Uh, they are through with their district schedule, fourteen and zero. Made it through the season, not losing a matchup. Summit, which again I give you credit, Tate. Uh, you called it early. Ten and three. Got to give it to Page. They're sitting at eight and four. Yeah. Centennial is seven four. Then it drops off from there. That's going to be the top four. So Nolensville, Summit, Page, Centennial are the top four right now. Again, the bracket's not out yet as the, at the taping of this show. But I think those four end up being the ones that are in the semis. But I, I'm, no one's will summit. Again, we'll see the bracket. I think they're going to be the two representatives. they got to be. Um, don't sleep on Coach Stevenson and the Lady Spartans, ever. You liked it. Well, I'll give you credit. Yeah. They're kind of like Ravenwood um, – they're kind of like Ravenwood flag football. They're a tournament team. They get better as the season goes goes along. They just do every year. The years they don't make it to the state tournament and the years they do. So I think they're the clear two. Uh, Page and Centennial are the next two. The one that should scare you the most out of those bottom four is Brentwood. Because of? Marina Mason, and they can beat you. They can beat any of them at any given day. You know, I look at some of these scores, and it's kind of baffling. You know, I, I was talking to Coach Servant at Centennial, and they lost to Nolensville, I guess it was this past two weeks ago, 8 nothing. I was like, hey, something's up. And he goes, we didn't pitch Lexi. We're still trying to rest her. I thought that was interesting in that usually someone will ride that same pitcher the whole year, but he said, listen, we want to give her a little bit of a break. Sure for some of those matchups uh, didn't totally matter. So I give him credit for that. But congratulations again to Coach Patton. Hey, who would have thought? A few years ago, Nolensville's the new school and they're trying to find their way. They totally dom dominate may be strong, but I'm going to use dominate. Baseball and softball winning the league. Impressive. Yeah, very impressive. And if it's not for Brentwood, they – are the top track and field program. They, they've got this good in soccer. they got this spring sports thing down pretty well. They do. Hey, let's talk a little flag football, Tate. This is where we're going to talk about the uh, our lack of maybe having great picks. But mm. uh, finish up this past week, Ravenwood again, the three-peat champion, which brings me, Tate, to this week's gym. You ready? Yeah. The number one seed has never yet to win won the tournament, which means Ravenwood hasn't been number one. Hey, you know what I loved about it? Now you got Coach Mancini leading the way. She was the DC for Coach Hester. You got Coach Rodriguez out there helping, doing a great job for Ravenwood. But Coach Hester, who wasn't part of the coaching staff, you know what he does? He sends me a pic on Monday. He said the state championship football. Uh, part of pa, pa, he said part of the that, that part of the trophy case getting a little full. He's got those three right by those tackle football. I, I love it, man. He wears he wears that, and that's yeah. important. Well, uh, Coach Hester watches the show. Mimi Hester watches the show. She definitely watches it. We haven't heard from her much lately, so we must be doing okay. Yeah, we're okay. Well, What's well, it, not? It gets a little heated. Not tackle from football. Time. It's not tackle football. Yeah, right, 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 right. Uh, but he he called me and said, "Hey, just want to let you know, saw the picks. Oh, and y'all are wrong. They're gonna win it." I said, "Well, you know, of course you're gonna say that." He said, "I'm just telling you, Ravenwood wins it, and they did." Coach Hester, shout out to you. You were right, but you would have said that. Correct. What was he gonna do? Call and say Brentwood's gonna right, win it? Right. Which the only person that's thought that over the past three years was you. You thought it in year one, didn't happen. So. <laughs> 
I'll remind you about that pick. Uh, let, let's look at the brackets, though. So we started, we started off okay. We start, So you start off the 8-9, and I'll give Brentwood credit now. They played well. They beat Independence 24-13 in that 8-9 game. Then yep. it's they play number one. 20-14, to 14, that was a game late. Had them on the ropes. Had them on the ropes, but didn't pull it off. So that moves Page to the semis, the number one seed, still undefeated. Then you move Centennial Summit, the 4-5 matchup. We both thought Centennial yep. uh, would advance. They didn't summit with the 7-6 win to make it to the semis. Yes. Other That's side of the bracket, Ravenwood Franklin. And I would admit, even though I got the pick, if I would have picked first, I would have – Yes, I would have pulled what you did, uh, nineteen six, and I'll be honest, it, it it didn't feel that close. Ravenwood just too much athleticism, dominated that game, moved on to the semis. Here was one neither one of us picked. Nolansville thirteen twelve, Fairview's up twelve nothing at the half. That's hard to overcome. Yes. And then a big play, the big strong arm of Sarah Colcarney makes a deep bomb uh, there at the end of the game for a touchdown. It was an impressive looking play. No Owensville wins 13 to 12 to move on to the semis. Now, semifinals, Tate. Page, 14 6 over Summit. Ravenwood, 34 14 over No Owensville. That sets up our one versus two final. Yes. Which I. I the way you wanted it. I, I, I picked that. You did? But I had Page to win it, so I was wrong. You had Page Franklin in the final. Uh, that obviously didn't work out. So, that final, Tate. Here's what I would say about it, and then I'll let you jump in and no. give your thoughts. Really the whole tournament, but when I watched that final, it was one of those things, I was so proud to watch it, to look at the improvement of, of, of the players. It's not powder puff. It hasn't no. been for a while. But the athleticism, some of the grabs that people were making, uh, Lexi Grundler, who made an unbelievable catch, to get them, put them ahead, and then she gets the interception to end the matchup. And I love Coach Rathbone's of Page. His comments after afterwards, he said, "An athlete took over the game," <laughs> and she really did. So it was just to watch it and watch where we're at level of play. We're ready for it to be sanctioned. We've got some people across the state going to have to catch up. Oh, they're going to have to catch way up. We want it to go well. We just don't want them to catch up. Well, yeah, and, and and you've talked about it from the beginning. Coach Rathbone's talked about it. One, uh, you, you you know, if you, if you get the buy-in from the head football coaches at the beginning that right. Williamson County had, uh, then you've done a heck of a feat. I don't think a lot of them are going to be able to get that. So the the foundation was laid, right? And then you got, you know, Coach Mancini's been learning, which here they are, third year in a row, the only flag football champion we've ever had. But learning under Coach Hester, she knows how to coach. She didn't. Had never been a football coach before, I don't believe. Learned under her, and then Coach Rodriguez comes in and takes over the offense, so didn't miss a beat there. Uh, yeah, everybody, and, and then the amount of female athletes that we have in this county, and the multi sport ones are, uh, you know, playing. Lexi Grundler, as you mentioned. By the way, you mentioned that catch. Did you see the uh, Pulliam got, got a picture of it? It's on the Williamson Herald. It's Go check it out. It's awesome. It is. I mean, you're right. And Coach Bone nailed it. An athlete took over the game. So uh, the thing I noticed, uh, I don't know if you thought, Paige was scoring so many points going into the tournament. Uh, Samantha Lee to Avery Payne. And, and that was another thing that I thought Coach Rathbone made a great point about. He's, he said, we're not talking about little three-yard dinks and dunks and then them taking them to the house. We're, we're, going, we're taking the top off. And hitting in the strike. So, anyways, I did notice that. I'd love to know what that was about. But Page, 20 points against Brentwood, 14 against Summit, and then 21 against Ravenwood. The offense wasn't as explosive on Sunday as it's been in the regular season. Here's what I'm going to say it is. It goes back to what you're talking about. These are football people. They make adjustments. Correct. That's what happens when we play one another. Uh, and I was talking, getting lots of calls from district athletic directors, some individual coaches that I know. Uh, they're planning on starting flag football programs. And I, and I do like, I always mention what you say. Get your tackle folks involved at least early on to get it going. And one particular group I talked to, uh, they've got seven or eight schools and they've only got two. Mistake. Mistake. You got to get them assistance. We were blessed to have the head coach. You know, I was talking to Coach Harris 
out in Rutherford County. Talk to Matt Kreisky. He was the first coach at Centennial. Talk to that guy. Get him involved. I think it's important yeah. that you try to get those tackle guys involved. It's, 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 here's the thing. It's good for football. Forget, and I'm talking tackle football. It's good for football overall that these flag programs do well. So I'm totally excited about it. When I watched this play and we had Emily Crowell of TSSAA, she's been great helping get that sport sanctioned. Uh, Mark Reeves, obviously, and his staff, they've been yeah. just wonderful. The Titans have been wonderful, but Emily was there giving out the awards, and you know she and I were talking during that championship. This is legit. This is not playtime. No, heck no. It's big time. Well, and again, look at the people that are playing. I mean, these, these are young ladies that are going to college in another sport, and they're still playing. Look at the people that are coaching. And, and I think we'd be remiss if we didn't say this. You don't want to single out anybody. But uh, Emma Rail, the quarterback of Ravenwood, she had a, she had a great – so they defeat Franklin, as you mentioned, 19-6, um, uh, to 6, Nolansville 34-12. Page 28-12. What a great run they were on. Emma Rail played well. Lexi Grunler played well. Uh, Allie Joyce played well. But watching this thing from the beginning, like, like the name, the flag football name that I will remember is Macy Fowler. Yeah. Because I remember the very first, you had a media day on it. That's right. Yeah. And she was there, so I guess she was a sophomore. And she had played tackle. She had played tackle football for her. She was so fired up about it. She was one of the athletes that – Coach Hester and Coach Mancini brought to media day. And and then here she is. She was a big part of them winning this championship again. She's been there since the beginning. She had a great three years playing, made plays, defensive. Uh, she'll just, as one of the fathers in the right word, right? But as one of the founding players of this league, she's the first name that comes to my mind. And I was glad to see her get to finish it off the way she did. Great career. Well, and you talk about one thing I would also, a little bit of advice for those trying to get it started, uh, get soccer players. Yes. <laughs> and there's also folks on the roster, it's, it's what they play. They play, they don't play something else. Or, you know, I was talking to coach, uh, one of our coaches in the, in the district saying there was a young lady who uh, was talking about this and was almost in tears about it. Like, hey, I'm playing another sport right now, and it's just not – I'm just not quite the level I need to be to really be a contributor. This is kind of saving me, giving me something to play. I thought that was, that's why we're doing it. That's right. It's what it's all about. It's not about stealing other people's play. Come on. That's an excuse. It's an excuse. <laughs> if it was that, then Mancini wouldn't be the coach. It's, it's about giving opportunities to people. Yep. And when it's the third most played sport already in the county, we're going to offer it. That's right. And we're going to support it. That's just what we're going to do. Well, and I think you would say this too. Uh, it's it's only picking up steam. I I jump on. Well, I got a or feeling. I get left hey, behind. I just thought of that. This, but I got a feeling. <laughs> I got a feeling your career might get resurrected in the in the flag world, but maybe on the girl side. Oh man. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I could see it. God, I still got the playbook saved. You better believe you do. I could see it. Just tell your defensive coordinator. Be fresh. <laughs> not only the young people, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Don't we'll, be, put it, we'll put him up in the box. Don't be railing an eight-year-old year, eight year old girl, Coach. Come on. Correct. It's easy. <laughs> not right. that she can't take it, but easy. Time and place. <laughs> hey, final thing here, soccer. Yeah. Uh, soccer's going to start this week, too. Final standings in the district. We'll go from eight to one. Summit eight, no one's will seven, Centennial six, Page five, Franklin four. Then you got Independence. A little bit of a surprise from yeah. some people. They finished second. Uh, they were tied with Ravenwood, but in the tiebreaker, they finished second. Brentwood six, zero, oh, and one. That won the number four seeded Franklin Admiral. So they do the same thing. You win the league, you move on in soccer. So if Brentwood makes the final, it's whoever else is in the finals. If they don't make the final, you got to win it. So top half of the bracket, Brentwood versus Summit, Franklin versus Page, bottom half, Ravenwood, Centennial, Independence, No Owensville. That tournament will finish up next week. But what are your thoughts about who wins that? Well, I think that's tough. Uh, so if you if the, the winners of the top half play each other? That, that's right. It's, it's a 
top that, and bottom bracket. That changes things, man. It does because I thought Rhett, I thought Franklin might be there, but I, I don't think they beat Brentwood. Brentwood's defense is too good. It's it's good. Uh, and Coach Coach Purcell said it all along. Uh, by the way, Coach has been, uh, which is, uh, no, he's fine with it. Uh, he'd, he, if you've been paying attention to the quotes, you can tell. But Coach has been, had to miss some time uh, getting better. So always thoughts. Always. With Coach Purcell, man. He's Great on, man. He's on the Mount Rushmore. Great man. Great man. Great coach, better man. There you go. Well said. Uh, coach Bowen, his top assistant, has been for a long time, has done a great job uh, running the team and Coach P's – when Coach P's not there. All that to be said, sometimes the offense uh, plays up to potential, sometimes it doesn't. The defense and the goalkeeping always stays up to potential, and it's so good I don't see anybody scoring enough points to beat them. So that being said, Brentwood beats Summit. I think Franklin beats Page. Ah, you know, we're big Coach – but going Franklin Admiral soccer fans, I just don't think he scored enough points. Brentwood wins. Ravenwood beats Centennial. Indy beats Nolansville. And then, again, broken record. When Franklin's not there, it'll be Brentwood, Ravenwood. Brentwood doesn't have to win the tournament to go on, but they do. That's exactly what I picked. I think we're – I think – Simpatico today. Simpatico. <laughs> That's the word, simpatico. Uh, and I think Brentwood – Wins the whole shebang again. Can't wait to see the bearded coach show his tail again. Well, the whole group, actually. <laughs> hey, kids. <laughs> hey, one final thing before we go. I know we got to go. Wilco workout this week. It's our version of a combine. Not really a combine, though. Uh, 30 colleges signed up to be there to check our 10 best from each school out. Going to be great. And boy, do we have some. We got some dudes. Dudes. We had we some, dudes some dudes last year. We got some dudes this year. Oh, in the NFL draft. That, how was that? Uh, it turned out pretty well for the, uh, for the Ravenwood Raptors. I was telling somebody this. Uh, I was at Beach High for 20 years, and I'm going to humbly say all the sports, without question, there was a period of time that was a top five in the state of Tennessee athletics for public schools. I believe that yeah, I in agree. the entire state. You talking football, basketball, baseball? All of it. Yeah. One pro in 20 years, Jalen Hurd. Pretty good player. Pretty good. I mean, Ravenwood, one school. Yeah. First some, round and third round. With some picks, man. I mean. Graham Barton. Uh, and, and boy, I won't do it today, but you know my – I don't think I think a lot of them. They're supposed to be evaluators of talent, but they're not. Uh, I don't know who the coach was. It Cutcliffe was that Cutcliffe? I think it was at Duke. Yeah, yeah. Coach Cutcliffe and them. Graham didn't have the Alabamas, the Clemson. I'm not saying Coach Saban is not an evaluator of talent, but a lot of schools missed on that guy, and I don't know how they did it because he was nasty, physical, could move, big, long. I mean, Graham Barton will have a heck. Uh, we'll have a heck of a pro career. And then Junior Colson goes to Michigan. I think everybody knew about him. So first rounder and a third rounder coming out of Raptor land. Oh, by the way, they got a they got one already there in Mr. Jefferson. Um, the NFL, uh, the alumni in the NFL, Ravenwood owns that. Time. Well, and Brenningstool. Brenningstool's coming. He's obviously going to come yeah. too. He'll be drafted next year. Incredible. Boy, and I know you were at him, but think, go back to those games. Pulaski Academy, IMG. It was fun. It was fun. It was fun. Tate, this was fun. It always is. Always is. Look forward to seeing you next week. Yes, sir. Thank you for joining us for Sports Connection. We'll see you next time.